on Auschwitz. The history of Auschwitz is exceptionally complex. It combined two functions, a concentration camp and an extermination center in gas chambers. Nazi Germany persecuted various groups of people there and the camp complex continually expanded and transformed itself. In the podcast on Auschwitz, we discuss the details of the camp's history and our contemporary memory of this unique place. The Auschwitz camp was established by the SS in the occupied city of Oświęcim on the Polish territory annexed by the Third Reich at the beginning of World War II. I spoke to Dr. Piotr Setkiewicz, head of the Museum Research Center, about the details of the decision-making process which led to the creation of the camp and about its first prisoners. When we look at the beginning of the functioning of Auschwitz, we look at the date of arrival of the first Poles political prisoners from Tarnów on June 14, 1940. And therefore the question is, why the camp was established here? Well, most people believe that Auschwitz was established from the very beginning with a plan for mass annihilation of Jews. I mean, people who think that railway junctions were crucial in the process of selecting out the place for the concentration camp, some others think that the location of Auschwitz or Auschwitz in the middle of Europe played its role. But actually, it is not the point. The history of the decision-making process was long and originated in the fall of autumn and beginning of winter of 1939, when SS authorities in Silesia came to the conclusion that the existing prisons, jails in the province were overcrowded and there is a need to do something with them because uh, the others, hundreds of thousands of Polish patriots who were being arrested at this time, they are waiting to be deported to the other camps. And these camps in the Old Reich, in the Old Germany, the borders before 1939, Dachau, Sachsenhausen and the others, were partly overcrowded and we must remember that the Dachau concentration camp has been closed uh, temporarily because SS needs space and a training center for newly established SS front units. And therefore, the Poles who had been arrested by the German police in Silesia had to wait. Nobody knows when the camps in Germany would be open again for accommodation of these people. That was in December 1939, when Richard Glücks, who was inspector of Nazi concentration camps, raised an idea to establish somewhere in the occupied Polish territory a large camp for prisoners. Then, it was in January 1940, Heinrich Himmler decided that there is a need to establish a state-run concentration camp somewhere in Germany, and some places were initially selected for this purpose. One of them were military barracks on the outskirts of uh, Auschwitz. The reason why this place was chosen seems to be simple. Because they were here, the process of uh, transformation of these buildings into the concentration camp would be cheap and quick, and these plans were associated somehow with the ideas raised in Breslau or Wrocław, in the office of the higher SS and police leader, Fontem Bachzelewski, who believed that the Auschwitz would be suitable for this purpose, for setting a camp subordinated to the structures of the inspectorate of concentration camps, namely that was to be a regular SS concentration camp, but it served a very particular role to be a sort of a quarantine camp, in which prisoners from Silesia were to wait for deportation to old concentration camps in Germany. And this was an idea that originated at uh, the beginning of January 1940. These plans were initially accepted, but the scale of Auschwitz in these uh, plans was limited to 10,000 inmates. More or less at the same time, Richard Glicks found another solution. A completely new large camp which was to be situated in the village of Stutov or Stutthof, near Gdańsk on the coast of the Baltic Sea. He believed that this site is favorable for many reasons. First of all, because the local police had already organized their a camp for the Poles from Pomerania. 
Secondly, because there was a large brick structure in the village, which could be easily transformed into the headquarters of the SS. The third point that the site was isolated from the rest of the country, it was in the middle of the forest. The only problem was with the communication, because Gluck's believed the prisoners should be delivered to Gdańsk at the beginning, then transported by buses to the bank of the Vistula River and from Vistula to the village of Stutovo by narrow gauge tracks. So it seems to be a bit complicated. Nevertheless, he was very enthusiastic and he found the support from other leading SS officers, including Heydrich and Oswald Paul. But as far as we can observe in the next uh, weeks, Gleeks was not treated very seriously in this proposal by Heinrich Himmler, most probably because of these problems with the communication, with transportation of prisoners to Stutovo. We don't know exactly when it happened, but most probably on the end of March 1940, the decision was taken to develop a new plan for Auschwitz to establish this camp, perhaps not larger, but to place it in the structure of concentration camps in Germany, on the same level as older concentration camps and to make there a regular Nazi concentration camp. So at the beginning of April, even in late March 1940, uh, we got first documents in which the name of Auschwitz uh, had been mentioned as the concentration camp. Then there was a problem with some legal issues because from the former point of view, the area of Auschwitz and the former Polish military base belonged to uh, the Wehrmacht, to the German army. Solution was found in this way that the barracks should be hired by the Wehrmacht for the needs of the concentration camp for the period of a, a year only, at the beginning. So, as we may see, the scope of construction works should be limited because legal status of Auschwitz not been settled and uh, SS could not be sure that this place uh, would belong to the SS organization in the future. Nevertheless, it was at the beginning of April, some construction works were initiated. Then, in the middle of the month, the formal agreement was reached between the SS and Wehrmacht. Wehrmacht agreed to hire the site of the Auschwitz barracks for the SS and more or less at the same time, the SS received the first branch of two million of rice marks for the needs of necessary construction works in Auschwitz. So that was the beginning, the initial point uh, of the history of Auschwitz, uh, where all the legal issues were solved and the SS officers who were responsible for construction works within the structure of this organization could begin initial works in planning of Auschwitz. Two million rice marks seems to be a large number, but it isn't something spectacular when we talk about construction of such a site. The problem was that uh, the SS raised this idea in the middle of the budgetary year. It was possible to a certain extent to cover financial needs of the new investments in Auschwitz. Two million of rice mark was not much. The more serious problem was to achieve the construction materials, bricks, cement, and the barbed wire, which uh, was crucial for the needs of concentration camps, because the buildings, the wooden and brick barracks, were still here to constitute the, the core of the concentration camp for the future. The 20 brick buildings of the former Polish military base, as well as over 20 wooden barracks that were used before the war as stables, storehouses, and temporary shelters for uh, Polish immigrants from Czechoslovakia. So, these buildings could be taken over by the SS immediately. The only problem was the lack of barbed wire, which was, of course, necessary to build a fence around the camp. We can see that this problem became crucial from the very beginning, during the first visit of the newly nominated commander of Auschwitz, Rudolf Hoess, with two other officers in Auschwitz. It was on the 17th and 18th of April 1940. They discussed about the necessary construction works. One of the officers, Zeidler, proposed to build a long fence, a long fence around all these wooden and brick barracks to accommodate 10,000 people. 
The problem was that the barbed wire was not viable. On the one hand, on the other, such a long fence over two kilometers could be the problem for the SS. First of all, because of lack of guards. We can see that probably within the next couple of weeks, these initial plans changed in order to simplify the construction of the camp and to shorten the length of defense. Can we trace a decision-making process? Because we are talking at first about Auschwitz as a quarantine camp. Mm -hmm. The numbers given are 10,000 prisoners. And then these prisoners are going to be transferred to other concentration camps. And we reach to the decision that Auschwitz is a concentration camp and the number suddenly skyrockets to 30,000 prisoners. So mm -hmm. can we trace in sources the decision-making process, why such a decision was made? In existing documents, in existing sources, we may see in April and May a number of times when the name of concentration camp Auschwitz was used in correspondence between various agencies of the SS. But it's difficult to say if Auschwitz was considered by uh, the leading officers of the Himmler, for instance, himself, as a concentration camp inside the structures of all concentration camps in Germany as a quarantine camp for them, or something happened, a certain new decision was taken, more or less in late April, beginning of, uh, uh, of May, uh, to transform the sort of quarantine camp into the regular German concentration camp. I would rather say that around 20th, 23rd of April, such decision could be taken because Fontenbach proposed to send to Germany all criminal prisoners from the jails in the Silesian province, but to leave the political prisoners in these uh, prisons, most probably they would wait there for the transfer to the Auschwitz concentration camp. So perhaps there is a certain argument uh, that more or less at this time Auschwitz began to be considered as regular concentration camp and this function, this initial function uh, for the quarantine had been abandoned at this time. What about the number? 10,000 versus the number the 30,000? Yeah, the, the number is still 10,000. But in the end of April, the head of the SS, uh, Reisfeuer uh, Heinrich Schimmler, he visited Warsaw and he said during one of his conferences that uh, there is necessary to initiate the new waves of mass arrest of Polish intelligence, of Polish elites. Some of them would be executed on the spot, while the others transported to the concentration camps. He believed that at this moment in time that about 20,000 Polish intellectuals should be sent to the concentration camps. Two weeks later, we may see in the correspondence of the Gestapo authorities that for the first time they mentioned Auschwitz as a large concentration camp with a planned capacity of about 30,000 people. So something happened in the meantime. And most probably these 20,000 Poles from the general government, from the central part of occupied Poland, were added to the number of 10,000 Polish political prisoners from the Salesian province. In this way, the number of 30,000 people planned for Auschwitz was reached and the formal order was issued by Richard Glicks on the 1st of June 1940 when he explained that the new camp in Auschwitz should be considering its capacity as to be 30,000 prisoners. He also said that barracks should be built there for six centric companies and so on and so on. Interestingly enough, this planned capacity of Auschwitz was much higher than the capacity of any other concentration camp in Germany, including Dachau, Sachsenhausen and others. So from the very beginning, Auschwitz was planned as the largest camp and the function was concentrated on the question of combating the threat of Polish resistance. Before the first Poles arrive at Auschwitz on June 14th, the SS brought on 20th May 1940, uh, 30 criminal prisoners from Sachsenhausen, which seems to be a, a typical procedure in um, creating a functionality of a concentration camp. And then on June 14, we have those 728 Poles. How those days look like and who were the, the first prisoners who were finally mm -hmm. chosen by the SS to start the operation of the camp? I personally believe that uh, the SS expected to open the Auschwitz concentration camp more or less around the 20th of May 1940, shortly after arrival of the 30 
German criminal prisoners who were selected in Sachsenhausen to be the couples, block seniors and other functionary prisoners in, in African integration camp. It was a typical and you're right uh, uh, in procedure in setting up most of the German concentration camps, including the parts of Auschwitz, for example, in one of its the first group of German criminal prisoners, German capos, were sent to the newly opened camp in order to prepare themselves for the arrival of the regular political prisoners. There is one argument that these 30 German criminals arrived to Auschwitz on the 20th of May and they did literally nothing within the next uh, couple of weeks. On the other hand, we may see that action of arresting the Polish prisoners was in progress, was initiated in the end of April. Many Polish patriots were arrested, particularly in the eastern part of uh, Little Poland, or Małopolska. These were the jails in Zakopane, in Jasło, in Sanok, in Rzeszów, many such places. And after a couple of days or weeks, these people were being transferred to the central German prison in Tarnów. We may observe the progress of transportation of uh, people from these local jails to Tarnów in the first half of May 1940. This action ended up around 23rd of May and nothing happened. These people spent the next three weeks in the jail waiting for something. And we don't know actually what happened when they were not transferred to Auschwitz, when these criminals, the couples, were waiting, when the SS Sentry Company has already been established. So what happened when the arrival of these uh, political prisoners did not happen in the end of May. So I believe that that was because of lack of construction material, lack of barbed wire. It was only on June night uh, when, for the first time, Rudolf Hoos received a letter in which the Wehrmacht the army promised him a certain amount of barbed wire from camps for Polish POWs that had already been liquidated. So that was only the moment in time when at least the SS Bauleiter, the head of construction office, and workers from the German construction company could begin the work in Auschwitz and to build the fence. Uh, you asked about the first deputies, who they were. Well, we can see this simply on the basis of the testimonies of the survivors on the one hand. On the other, if you like to analyze the surviving German documents, you can easily find out that uh, there were many young people among them, among the first deputies secondary school students who were arrested a couple of days before the 3rd of May, which was a Polish national holiday before the war. So most probably Germans did it because they believed that these young boys could take part in a certain form of uh, patriotic manifestations. The second group uh, was constituted mostly in larger cities in eastern Małopolska, they were the members of the local elites, uh, teachers, lawyers, those people who were to be the main target of the AB action, action against the Polish intelligence. So there were Poles as well as some Jews who were brought to Auschwitz, mostly from Tarnów. And the third large group, these were so-called tourists. The young people who wished to join the Polish army in France, which had been organized by the General Sikorski, in France, and they wished to get there uh, through Slovakia, Hungary, and uh, Yugoslavia to fight against Germans in France. How we know it? Because most of these people did not live in Małopolska before they were arrested. They were born and lived in Warsaw, in Łódź, in many places in central Poland, rather. Though the question is why they were suddenly arrested in Małopolska, very close to the border with Slovakia. So, because they were touched by Germans or the Slovak gendarmes on the border, then sent to Zakopane, a local jail from Zakopane to Tarnów, and finally they ended up in Auschwitz. So these three groups constitute the, the majority of prisoners from, from the first transport to Auschwitz. And when we talk about their first days in the camp, this is a slightly different experience than many of the transports that arrived days and weeks later, because they actually arrive not to a ready camp, I mean ready in terms of the functionality and the space that we know of, because the camp actually isn't ready 
when they arrived on June 14, 1914. Everything with the transports was the first one. There were many people in the transport who believed in Tarnum jail that uh, they probably would be sent to, to perform slave labor somewhere in Germany. Nobody heard about Auschwitz. And interestingly enough, there were two people among the deportees who were born in Auschwitz. So perhaps they knew more or less where they are going when they are passing by railway station on the way to Auschwitz. And thanks to the surviving schedule, we know exactly what time they arrived. Yes, we can precisely say when the first group of political prisoners arrived to Auschwitz, it was 10 past 3 p.m. on the 14th of June when they arrived to Auschwitz, but they were not taken to the regular blocks of the concentration camps because they were still under construction. So as a temporary solution, the SS used the large building of the former Polish tobacco monopoly, situated very close to the barracks of the concentration camp, and they spent there the next almost three weeks in, this, in these buildings. Of course, they were registered there, but they did nothing except from the so-called sport of physical exercises. That was the way how the SS wished to broke the morale of the prisoners and to prepare them to react immediately on all possible orders that they might have received from the SS. So uh, that was very traumatic, very hard experience for prisoners. Most of them were simply shocked observing the German brutality, constant beating, the attitude of SS soldiers, particularly towards those people who were old, who could not simply cope with such long and exhaustive series of these exercises. They could also see how the SS used to treat the people who were priests uh, or who, by making a certain gestures, prayed to the God. So that met with immediate reaction from the SS men or the capos, and very brutal, of course. And they could also see the first killings. We don't know exactly who was the first victim of Auschwitz. Most probably that was an old Jewish prisoner who was brought to Auschwitz in the first transport and died after perhaps two or three days after arrival. As I said, everything was the first in Auschwitz with these people and they were the first ones who had the chance to learn what the Auschwitz is and is to be in the future. On the other hand, some of them at least had a slightly better chance for survival. Ironically, the other prisoners who came to Auschwitz after the first transport in the next weeks or months, they were almost immediately put to work. Heavy manual work by construction of the barracks, leveling the ground, construction of the fence and so on. At least few of uh, these prisoners from the first transport, they had the chance to take certain better posts of the works and better commanders. For instance, some of them were sent to the newly established hospital to be nurses. Some others had to be clerks to register the other prisoners. So few of them had uh, the chance to survive the entire period of existence of Alfie. They were from the very beginning to the very end. But those who were old, who could not understand German orders, could not speak German. They uh, usually were directed to the hardest kind of labor and uh, they were dying gradually within the, the next couple of months. So I think when we try to get to some kind of conclusion, when we look at those first weeks of the camp, but also everything that preceded the formation of Auschwitz, it somehow goes against the myth that many people believe, uh, because they look how Auschwitz developed later, that everything was made according to some kind of a plan and very strict mm -hmm. schedule, and there was already an idea what Auschwitz would be. While, in fact, when we look at this, it's the story of chaos and very different set of thinking when we look at the SS decision-making that finally formed something, and then the development of Auschwitz is another story of finding solutions to different problems and different policies that happen to push the story of Auschwitz into different directions. Exactly. When we are looking at the decision-making process, the lack of consequence in these decisions, perhaps from the very beginning, the idea to build a new large camp in Stutovo, and suddenly somebody, perhaps Heide Schimmler, 
So the another decision, no, the Stutava cannot be taken into account for the future. Auschwitz uh, seems to be a more suitable place for a large camp. Two months later, Glix is uh, sending a letter to Himmler that, uh, sorry, uh, Reisführer, I was wrong. After the careful rethinking of all these arguments, I believe that now Stutthof is not necessary. I think that Auschwitz will meet all of our requirements for the future. Then, when the SS finally take this decision, there was the problem how to put it into the practice, because, as I said, it was like of construction materials. And I don't believe that SS Auschwitz uh, garrison uh, was the favorite for the managers of, of the SS who, in the fall of the year, finally decided to send the Auschwitz the first shipments of bricks, some of them from Germany, some others from France. So that was practically the moment when Rudolf Hess could begin this serious construction of new barracks or the second stories of the existing one-story buildings in, in Auschwitz. So I believe that was because, uh, first of all, uh, many people who were involved in this process of planning of Auschwitz, uh, they were not the training bureaucrats. They were officers of the SS who had no experience with the, the paperwork. Secondly, Auschwitz, until the beginning of 1941, uh, that was not treated by the German planners as an important one, as uh, so something that should have a priority over other concentration camps. So that was the reason why if somebody in Poland had heard about Auschwitz uh, in 1940, he probably would think that uh, Auschwitz was just, just another German concentration camp, perhaps uh, Dachau and others are more horrible. The situation dramatically changed with uh, the new decisions uh, which were taken in the spring of 1941 that led to the Auschwitz in its form as it was in 1943-44. And I'm sure this is something we also will be able to discuss later um, when we talk about those key moments in mm -hmm. shaping and developing Auschwitz. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can find all our On Auschwitz podcasts at www.auschwitz.org slash podcasts.